Good evening and welcome to Flat Earth United. Joining me this evening is Jibby Jedi and Martin Leitka. How are you doing, Jibby, first and foremost? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. How are you, Nathan? I'm pretty damn fine. No complaints from me. And second of all, Martin Leitka, Flat Earth British. How are you doing, my friend? I am epic, Nathan, in a higher state of excitement, as per usual. <laughs> Good epic. to hear. Good to hear. Well, in case people haven't guessed from the thumbnail or the title of this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about heliocentric and flat Earth history. And this has been inspired by, um, hopefully, we may be joined by Zoe, but Zoe Scribner of Be Here in Love, Jibby Jedi and Martin Leitke and their recent discussions about similar subjects along the lines of heliocentric and flat Earth history. So maybe we can start with you, Jibby, because you were alluding to the 500 year timeline that we are presented with heliocentrism being bunk or not being as long as maybe we are led to believe. Can you expand on that a little bit and explain a little bit what you explained on that show that you did maybe three or four days ago? Well, I, I like to think of it in terms of relativity. Um, how old is the globe is relative to you and your location and when it was brought to your location. Otherwise, the globe, you know, it, it, it only has the age of what you're told it, it is. It's, it's basically, uh, I could say, um, there's an empty house and then one hour later you come back to it and it's completely filled up and with furniture and it's like somebody's lived there and you say, how did this happen? And the one person says, oh, I've been here for years. And you say, no, that's impossible. Uh, of course, yeah, here's my 10 friends. They'll tell me, they'll tell you I've been here for years. Oh yeah, he's been here for years. No, that's impossible because one person, it would take longer to move all the, and you can break it down how one person can't do this in one hour. And it doesn't matter because the 10 people are all going to say, yeah, yeah, he says it's, uh, it's been here for years, so that's the way it is. The majority believes it. And, and there you go. This is how it's established. It's, it's uh, perception deception. And so for America, I was saying, from what I could tell, you know, with the time of literacy, um, ending around maybe, say, mid-19th century, people were starting to become literate, learning how to read and math. And uh, now you have the tools allegedly you have the tools to uh, confirm or deny this this globe model which should make everybody laugh prior because all of your senses tell you you're on a flat stationary level plane and uh, and then you're told this, this these wacky things like that if, if it's gonna make you laugh but without the skills to read and to do the math how can you prove it to yourself you really can't. You have to take your word for it. So this thing has never been solidified because right up until even today, there are still illiterate adults who can't confirm or deny for themselves what this is. So if you're illiterate and the majority was, how can then you, you then say like this is the established model that's been accepted for 500 to 2,000 years when people, how can people possibly establish it? for themselves when they can't read or write only the select few can you, you know what i'm saying like so yeah, it's so relative to me prior to the printing press you've got a situation where obviously people would just take their surroundings and accept that as being the case you may have you know bi biblical literalists but them aside you've got people who would just you know look around them and just take what they see as red you know that's how it is and if you're not being told via tv or but via a newspaper how are you going to have that information thrust upon you? So then you're left with what we have now, and we look back in history to the depictions of the globe, and you've got things like Universal Studios, who know exactly what it looks like long before NASA actually go up and take an alleged photograph of it, which is in itself quite suspicious, given that TV is, as at least this panel would agree, you know, the biggest mind-controlling programming tool that they have. So it's, it's an interesting one when you look at it in terms of how long our perception has been able to grasp the concept of heliocentrism. Right, right. Um, the Universal logo, I believe, uh, was introduced in 1912, I want to say. Uh, that's the very earliest I could find of it. And so that's a good 50 years before they got out far enough to take a picture of it and noticed, hey, look, all the continents line up 
and are recording exactly like this this logo we had well 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 before like generations before we could get out there we had everything just right on this globe wrapped around perfectly that we had the tilt right we had the access right we had everything which is fascinating to do all that from the ground basically blind like you're not out there to be able to see all of this but these people could do it and we're so right and it of course the nasa freemasonic uh group confirms it and then yeah when we were inundated with the moving pictures and radio this this kind of widespread communication that could hit people all at once versus your town crier or whatever that could only speak to the locals in the ha town hall and such uh now you have this overwhelming intimidating force against you proposing this with fantastic hollywood magic visuals and and all kinds of displays to wow you and excite you like the world's fair kind of stuff you know it's like wow we gotta go we gotta see this and of course that when when you're faced with such an intimidating force you feel meager and and kind of like humble to it like wow they are so much better than me at this stuff that you kind of give yourself open to it like okay they must know what they're talking about and it's a perception deception it's all about presentation and no substance as long as the wrapper is bright with sparkles and bows or whatever it could be empty and people will pick it over a unwrapped box full and loaded with substance because they want the visual candy and that's what hollywood gave them the visual candy to, to fall in love with and they did and once we hit the 19th uh, 20th century with the, these technologies it it wasn't such a, a tug of war with globe earth flat earth like it was prior because you could have half the town hall saying of course it's flat and the other half going well this makes sense too and you know this will go on forever until you have some kind of an overwhelming dominant trump force to just be louder than all of it and and in a way nobody can say it's right or wrong except for them because they're the only ones with the tools to show you all that so and this is how we got into this in the 20th century was loaded with overwhelming technologies and displays and visuals and many many distractions including the world wars and all the conflicts and everything like that and once the big media and moving pictures got out there they get to focus your attention on anything they want to pull you away from the globe flat it's like well, what do you mean this globe oh yeah it's established already but it's the first time i'm hearing about this globe well it, it just because you're just hearing about it now doesn't mean this hasn't been argued and established for thousands of years well, it's the first time i'm hearing it well that's the facts uh, how do i know that's true it does, it doesn't matter because most people will go with that and that's what we're still facing today fast forward a hundred years maybe even 50 years and you've got the image of superman flying around the cgi globe and they're getting you on a completely different level level they're getting you on a subliminal level as well as you know exactly as you've just described they tell you it's it's a long established potentially maybe we'll get to this later 2000 years established the fact that you haven't heard about it is irrelevant but then you go to the the theater and while you're being told that you're suspending disbelief about superman flying around he's flying around a globe and that bit isn't obviously that's not a suspension of disbelief that's standard accepted science so therefore you're accepting that part of the story while you suspend disbelief about spider-man or superman or whoever else is flinging his way around the globe on that particular picture so yeah they've got you every which way that you can possibly imagine and this is why when when asked if if, if i'm to say well which has got the most evidence and it's not in its favor but which has got the most evidence it's definitely globe earth because every single way you look there is "Quote unquote evidence for the flat for the for the globe Earth for the spherical Earth, and that's not to say that that evidence isn't nonsense. Like Superman's flying his way around the heliocentric globe, right? You know, and now you, or some people count as evidence. You know, it's an image that's implanted in their mind that tells them where they live, and makes a justification for declaring that that is so. And as time goes by, now you're dealing with a numbers game." Because it's not just 100 pieces of evidence anymore. Now it's a thousand. Now it's ten thousand. Even though it's all fake, there's still ten thousand. You know, you have the globes, the toy globes. You have the pictures. You have all these different mediums of evidence, of proof of it. As time goes by, it'll, they'll just keep adding to it. So then people are dealing with a numbers game. It's like, well, I could probably debunk those 50 pieces of evidence. 
but now when you're faced with 10,000, it feels like, nah, see, it can't be fake if there's 10,000 pieces of evidence, you know? And then it's a, that's a mind game. That's the perception deception. It's, it's all about presentation. And they're just presenting nonsense. There's no substance to any of it. I, I, it never was. But we were just duped by the, the <laughs> duper's delight, the, just the perception deception of the, of the presentation. And, and most companies still do that today. They'll spend a lot of money on the advertisements and the presentations, and then you buy the product, and it breaks in a month. And so this is crap. This is this is where I'm hoping to bring Martin in. Not necessarily breaks in a month, or is not as advertised. And throughout history, and this is something that Martin's been revealing, the narrative changes, the history changes, the locations of items change. You know, there's all sorts of things that they're not necessarily completely hidden, but they aren't made prevalent. You know, they're not part of the narrative that these things have changed. Maybe maybe you can fill in the gaps in that bit, Martin. I can give you many, many examples, Nathan. But um, Gibby's right on the money uh, with all of it, you know. But as far as I can see, it's, it's quite simple. It's the grand deception. It's bigger than anybody could imagine. It's all aspects of our life. You know, you, people, they're using um, academia, or if you see the television um, science people, They'll hop back to ancient Greece or Aristotle's sticks in the sand or what have you for an excuse. Now, in my mind, I think that they have written the history um, relatively recently. They rely on the oral traditions to die out over a generation two, which is what happened. And word of mouth just gets skewed over time anyway, as you know, down the end of the queue. And um, they rely on that and they hand us um, the model, which was that globe. They hand us the history, so that's Vikings, Normans. But um, unfortunately, the evidence that they give us, um, it doesn't fit with the evidence uh, on the ground. As far as I can see, we haven't been here very long. It doesn't seem to be very long. There seems to be a serious absence of people or ancient graves, so to speak. There should have been billions and billions and billions that have gone before us, and they're, they're not there. Um, but I was I had a mind blowing discovery today. I, it made my hat pound in my chest when I found it. Um, but I'll get to that a bit later. But you know, I'll give you an example. The old inhabited city on Earth, Damascus. They will tell you. You can go to that city and find way over two thousand years of um, of buildings inhabited there, right there today. Unfortunately, if you go on Google and look for a map of the place, fourteen hundred, they don't exist. Fifteen hundred? No, not really. Any? No. No, um, art, what about your art? You're bound to have Damascus in your art. Well, no, we haven't. 1400s, no, 1500s. So what's going on for the oldest city on earth? Then move on to any city of your church, Constantinople I was on today, um, any city, and you will find exactly the same thing. Their records run dry. Just just choose the city, do this exercise for yourself, and you will find the records are not there. Anything is held by them. Okay, and they write the version of reality for us. They got all the schools, they got the think tanks, they got the first universities, Cambridge, Oxford universities, introduced later Ivy League ones to America. You know, I can see clearly how it is done. To get all the most intelligent kids in, um, the ones that are really clever, they will pick out use for themselves. Um, and anyone who's clever enough to pick this apart, um, they'll probably snap up as well and use. And like Jibby said, they rely on people to be fast asleep and not work this out, which most people out there generally, um, actually don't even care in everyday life, or wouldn't really be able to dig it apart because it hasn't been explained to them. None of this was really explained in school. I had picked all this up myself outside the school, which is strange, and I would go there to bring this up, and they couldn't tell me about it, especially heliocentrism. But, but what about this? What about that? Never get an answer. It didn't do me very well in school, actually, for that. That was what I did wrong asked too many questions they could not answer or would not go there and um, this happened a lot but heliocentrism as far as i can see it's fitted exactly in with that great deception once you can break the history apart then all of their bullshit falls apart nathan because what can they have back to ancient greece that has been handed to them have, have a dig into ancient greece to try and find some sources if you can <laughs> not man not man there's no sources where, i mean where i get this on the debates that i've been running that you have an explanation for almost everything when it comes to heliocentric nonsense. And the unfortunate position you're left in is having to explain to a globe head that we're in the midst of a deception. You know, I would call it the biggest deception mankind has ever experienced. 
I mean, maybe I can phrase this as a question to, to Jibby. If if it is the case that we have a shorter time frame for this deception than we are led to believe, in other words, the stories of Copernicus are just made up. Let's just say that for the sake of this argument. Would we actually ever be able to, A, prove that that's the case? And if it was, wouldn't that mean that there were still people potentially alive that are deaf, that are actually perpetrating this deception now? Yeah, we see, well, we see people who like to be a part of the show, even today, with these false flags. One example would be the Florida nightclub shooting incident. Me, personally, I, I came across probably at least 15 people that I know, and I probably talked to maybe 30 or 40 real-life people on a kind of semi-weekly, monthly basis. So that's a good majority who have at least said that they or their friend knows somebody who was shot or killed at the Florida nightclub shooting, which coinciding with everyone else's stories that I've been hearing, that seems to be the most popular group of people in the history of the world that everyone around the globe seems to know or have a relate. It's, it's, it's literally, what do they say, uh, seven degrees from Kevin Bacon kind of thing, <laughs> whatever it is, like everybody seems to be somewhat related to it. And I think that might have occurred with this globe thing too, as it still seems to occur with anything attached to royalty. People are like, oh, I want to go see the royal wedding. Oh, I want to be a part of the royalty. They get caught up in the fantasy of it and want to be a part of the narrative. And yes, they could be like, oh, well, um, yes, my, my, uh, I'm related to uh, Copernicus. He was my great, great, great. You know, and, and how are you going to verify that, really? I could say, um, and I could get 50 people to come over if I pay them and say that my grandfather used to fly through the air. And they will all come and testify it. They'll show you drawings. They'll show you freshly made carvings. But they'll say that these are old. And all kinds of proofs that my grandfather used to fly through the air. And it's pretty much the same thing as far as provable, not provable, as this globe thing and, and how old and how far it goes back. And, and, and back then, uh, the only way you could get the information out across the world would be on foot or carrier pigeon or something like that. So how do you get this model to everywhere, to all the continents? How do you get everybody to agree, which they still don't? And uh, Marlena, who was on our show there, uh, the Micmac tribe, she says, uh, my people never believed in the globe and still don't. Like, it's, they, they were, you know, that's just one tribe. And, and that's in Canada. And there are some in America and there are some in Mexico and there are some all over the place who never bought into it. So you can't say it's worldwide accepted. or it, well, when, when you're just saying that, you have to prove it, and you can't. But nobody's going to even try. They're just going to say it, and then others will say it, and others will say it, and, other, and then the TV will say it, and the radio will say it, and NPR will say it, and everybody will say it, and politicians will say it. doesn't mean it's true, no matter how many times you say it. <laughs> That's what we're facing. Well, you brought up something interesting, which Martin and I have seen firsthand, which is in terms of, you mentioned royal, royalty and the older graves are all royal and they're all of deep historic importance but the domestic is domestic the right word the humble graves are not you can't even well i'm i'm stealing your thunder here martin maybe you can carry on well no i've hunted they're not there you're right nathan and the ones that are of any antiquity are in there you know like westminster or Hedda cathedral as you know but it is, it might be this bloodline. Like you say, in the perpetrators, they might well be alive or their descendants, their closest descendants. It could be. It could be that much of a deception in that closer time span. And nothing would go past. I wouldn't put anything past it at this stage. Something is drastically wrong. Why would they Photoshop Victorian photographs? Why are they skewing the Kenyan era? It's beyond me. There's something really sinister in that alone. Um, and the absence of de uh, dead people. Um, you go to a local graveyard, you can't find nothing previous to 1600 in, in any graveyard. Put it down to poverty, not having enough money. It's rubbish. I went to the cathedral where the money was for my country, where any nobleman would have been buried. There was nothing, nothing under 1800. What did that, I, that Martin, was it 1100 that we saw the earliest grave in Hereford Cathedral? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, apparently, yeah, apparently, uh, well, no, later, because um, the map of Monday is 1190, um, so it would have been 13th century. There was, there was um, a, literally a, a bishop, um, an, a bishop in there, 
um, who's actually in the John Speed match, which I've got down by there on the floor. Um, but funny you mentioned the printing press. That's quite a good. I researched that recently. Now, what do we go on? Official contemporary narratives, don't we? So that's the Caxton Press, isn't it? So what proof have we got for Caxton Press? Well, you can actually go and visit it. Well, that's actually a bit of an alarm call for me. And the first print of it, well, no. No. So I think there's something going on with that. That might have been initiated at a completely different time or just whenever they told us. Um, and as for the map, like you say, they were brought in by that cartographer, John Speed, who I've been researching for, Elizabeth I. She gave him a, literally a custom house. She said, go print maps and get them onto the masses. And these John Speed maps, first time, 15, 1507. Okay. Just after, apparently, um, 1607, I'm very sorry. But um, just after Elizabeth I's father, apparently, disillusionment of the abbeys and the reformation of the church um, and the Enlightenment, all in this narrow time span. And when you dig into that narrow time span, you're trying to make sense of it. Like Jibby said about him digging up DNA. To prove the Plantagenet um, dynasty existed, a.k.a. Henry II of Agincourt or Richard III of Crookback, they literally dig him up out of a car park in Leicester and find a relation of his in America to say, oh yeah, there's a DNA match here, a relative in America. Richard III existed. Voila. See what they do? Yeah, it's a magic show. They're, they're pulling things <laughs> out of hats. Yep. Any subject, dig in, it's not just the heliocentrism, Jibby. Name a subject, um, Teutonic movement, glaciation, um, uh, topography, just name a subject, delve in, and see if what they're telling you is true, because I tell you what, it ain't. And like you say, they, they back it up with years of maths. But Martin, it's, it's worth giving the audience per perhaps a bit more meat to the Mapper Monday narrative, because for me, that's kind of a flat earth proof, because you're in a position okay. where Jibby described it as like the town crier, but that would be the metaphorical equivalent, because they carted this thing around in, they had all sorts of different boxes for it, you know, this, this map. And what you've got is a flat depiction of what they categorically tell you is everything the whole world now martin's going to hopefully grab down his map on monday and, and and show what we're talking about but it's minus in again in quotes the new world you know there's no americas on there but that is what the people who are telling the peasants this is where you live this is all of it and what do you know there's land missing off it but up until you know, that was about, like you say, Martin, about the crossover point that they started introducing. That's According it. to the current narrative, that would be the point that they were introducing um, heliocentrism as a known fact. You know, and according to even, you know, different, slightly different narratives, they were so aware of it back then while they were punting the map on Monday, because 2000 years ago, they had sticks and shadows and knew it anyway. You know, again, no photographs at any stage at this point, but they know. And they're showing people the map of Monday. It makes no sense. The story, the timeline doesn't add up, basically. No, it's fabricated. The past is fabricated. And the more you dig in, you find this. And when you go to these places, you can find this for yourself. What has happened, I can't really put my finger on it, but something has. <laughs> and and it's, it's in a narrow window of time as well. All of it. All, all of their, you know, their, their stories. You know, you can even think, um, if you've got to interpret the Bible stories of the Old Testament and all that, all of that into this narrow window also. All of it. All of this pre-flood civilization and the existence of the civilization before, they've been trying to eradicate. And it is there. I think it's probably more, there's more buried in the in the deep um, rain, rainforest and such. Low. Uh, and what we have on display are rebar uh reconstructions of well that's part of the, the, the muddying of the water so we don't find out jibby the, the, the megalith era we did not snap our fingers one day and say i know we're all we're all over the plain at exactly the same period decide to move huge blocks of stone we can't possibly move and hew them with chisels made out of copper apparently apparently mankind did this right we didn't the megalithic era is a con use the waters to add longevity to this timeline just think of that demonic death, um, Dawkins, with his selfish gene. This is how he explains it. He says, humanity has been here as long as this, uh, this little fingernail by the end of my nose. And these, this line here represents the epochs of time that we've been here. And this little fingernail at the end of my nose is humanity. This is the, the yarn, the, the lengths of time. Same with the distances of the stars, Jibby. They had a, a, 
but it's not it's not that at all it's more compressed and it, the, the evidence is there if you can just um just accept the deception is total you know it's a big impact and people can not think like you know with the heliocentrism lie as well and everything else the history is the fabricated past and all the sciences they taught us pretty bullshit really if you dig into you know tonic movement do you buy the way they explained that and volcanicity do you think volcanicity is the reality the way they explain it have you witnessed this action what about glaciation have you witnessed that in flux you know there's a lot when you dig into it you find there's an absence of you know an absence of the proof so just no, take no, no. glaciers mm. Martin. i've seen plenty of time lapses are you saying so the time? Have I. so have I. but what i'm trying to say is you will see them in flux you will see that what they will say is a valley left in wales is a glacial valley that deposited stones like sandpaper across the landscape they're not there now they said they got rid of them in the 1600s by lighting fires under them and smashing them up and getting rid of them this is historically sort of put into the narrative apparently so these valleys were huge by glaciers unfortunately you can't see this in action these ones you see in time lapse they're literally you can't see the whole thing because apparently that takes eons for it to carve this valley or an ice age but you can see it move and calf and fall into the sea but you won't see that valley being literally the last bit of that glacier disappear into the sea and that valley's being produced looking like it does as a glacial valley in wales it's not the same just look into it and it's bigger land calls for glaciation and it's something they push heavily <laughs> no, you're right i mean it's like i say immediately i thought well no i can challenge that but th that again sends up red flags doesn't it why is it the case that i know about glacial movement i shouldn't That's know that right. well I, i've just been sold a narrative for two but like i'm saying Nathan, like the jibby said you know they, they they sell you this and they just hope you won't look into it or think too much about it you know the information is there to be selected but like you know they back up all this information and data you couldn't possibly understand or you know, with the heliocentricism and, and relativity physics, and a mountain of what? Calculus. How many of the population can read calculus? <laughs> Not many. So we're bones for uh, verifying this, what they give us, aren't we? So, and it's the same with all of it in the past as well. I don't buy that one bit. Sounds like it all came out of a handbook to me. <laughs> have you have you ever played uh, those role playing games where you can pick the time period? To experience like i have a couple of like say pirate games only where, here with time traveling fantasies <laughs> well uh, i i, I kind of have like the metaphor like it's it feels like we all chose this virtual reality uh that started in the 1500 and it goes to say 2100 would you like to play earth uh the enlightenment to the new age uh wow. you know and and boom we're here so mm -hmm. everything prior to 1500 is the fabricated and we're just working along here it is almost kind of like that because you just start and it's like well i don't i don't remember anything prior to this well, where is it it is <laughs> you know? spooky though uh, Jibby. it is actually spooky i'm not just being like you know chucking it out there i've really really dug in for years and i've worked on this stuff i've worked with stone masonry archaeology um on the buildings and it's see i've got a feel for this stuff i've seen a lot of this stuff on the on the ground always had questions with the timeline i brought it up since the beginning of the flat earthers something's wrong with the timeline um but when you when in the last you know with this clear vision that i've managed to develop with being a flat earther i managed to be able to absorb incredible amounts of information um i found a key and when you dig in you find the past is not there it's very sketchy further back you know even they want bits of the past even they want it I, if I, somebody shows up 1600 they want it <laughs> yeah whole concept though isn't it he, he controls the past controls the future basically 100 percent, nathan bang on yeah and i In brought up like how um how most people's family personal family histories only seem to really go back at best to say the 1600s at least everyone i've spoken to regular folk uh, they've dug into their family histories as best they could, and mine only goes back to maybe 1712. Uh, what's that there? I want to show you this, Jibby. You're going to like this, my brother, and I know you will. I know you really like this, okay? All of you might, because you're an American, and I know you like your music, okay? That's my grandfather, okay, with the um, jazz legend. Do you, know, you recognize him? Hugh Gellington, you know what I mean? 
He's in the same regiment in the RAF as my granddad. He came over with the Americans, within my father's squadron in the RAF in the war, and he became best buddies with Duke Ellington. The Duke Ellington. There's my grandfather in the jungle. I got, I got loads of war photos. Nice. Stuff blown up. There's a squadron, 622 squadron, grandfather squadron. Um, there's a Spitfire. Pretty nifty, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, oh, making nice. Halloween's for pumpkins. Look at the guy's head with his pumpkin, right? They're making Halloween pumpkins. Apparently, North Africa in the Battle of El Alamein, right? Yeah. Freaky, isn't it? And there's the one with uh, Hugh Gallington. Yeah. That's my grandfather next to him there. Freaky, isn't it? Oh. But that's tangible. Go further back. <laughs> I was going to say to Jibby, you know, going back to 1700s, that's pretty good to go back that far with your family timeline. That's amazing, in fact. It took a lot of time, and we only recently wow. just got to the maximum um, <laughs> distant past, probably within the last two years. My cousin went to the Azores to had to dig this up because that's where my family's from, the Azores. No way. Mid-Atlantic, mid the Azores. Yep. yep. Uh, wow. San Miguel is where my grandpa's from. So we went there, and we found his sister that he never knew uh, because they were separated, and he was sent to America. She stayed there, um, found her family, and went into her records. And the fr and it's all in Portuguese, uh, which yeah, we were, you know, some of us speak it. I don't. Um, so I had a hard time going through all that paperwork, and uh, I just went through it maybe two months ago. So, yeah, we go back to about 1712 or so. That's the furthest back our records go. So I wondered, like, maybe this phenomenon that seems to be occurring with everyone's personal family history, not going back thousands and thousands of years, like the royals or even some tribes, uh, could we have all been maybe burned out of where we were established by the governments over time and lost all those records? I'm thinking maybe that's a possibility, too. Um, things would have been flammable, or if you have to pick up and run, you're not grabbing a bunch of stone tablets and running with them or whatever, oh. you know? But oh. this was the kind of thing, at least in America, where uh, the pioneers would settle. Here comes the government. Nope, you guys have to move. Oh, we've been here for a generate. Too bad. You have to move. Yep, that's it. If you don't move, they burn you out. And you, the same thing befalled the American pioneers, befalled the Indians, except for they were, of course, much, well, the Native Americans. I have to get out of that habit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they chased everybody away, the government, as they manifest destiny uh all the way across is kick you out kick you out we own this we own that burn you down burn it out and then your records are burned and do it. yeah but there should be still more personal records going back a thousand two thousand years or more there and should be some doesn't. somewhere there should be somewhere but yeah. let's just start there's no lineage the lineage ends even this is what's suspicious to me the ss um, used to use a program to choose their people, right? But they only chose the records back in 1742 or somewhere in that region. No further back to find out if they had any Jewish heritage. Don't you find that a bit of an alarm call? Why not a generation back? Isn't a generation back there? Really weird that was reading yeah, that. I have an answer to that, but I do have a question which is revolves around some of the maths or the extrapolations that I've seen going backwards where they work the numbers back and it seems like we'd get back to just a couple of people in a much shorter space of time. I mean, that's kind of kind of spurious because I don't necessarily buy the current. Well, the time, the time is a part of it. Look, did your, when they switched that uh, right on the advent of the 1600s, when we had a tsunami hit Wales, when this John Speed map was, was introduced to Britain, right? They um, oh God, it's, they introduced the Julian calendar into Gregorian. But did you know the Freemasons and the royal family, they're still on Juliana, which is why the Queen has an unofficial birthday, an official birthday, which is the Juliana calendar birthday, um, and a Gregorian calendar birthday, which is her normal birthday. So that's why she has two. Um, so it's it's not really hard. It's still, you've got to do this fucking extrapolation thing with the dates, Nathan, when you're trying to work things out, it drives you nuts because some things are put down in Juliana. 
and that chucks everything out again. And then he's done a later reset with the uh, death. Well, this is official ones, you know, the railway time system in the 1850s. Didn't met the correct time, exactly the same time across the UK. Before then, they never. Um, and then later on then, GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, set the meridian for the whole of this helocentric model. They're all coupled in straight to that and the history. Once it all falls into place, you know this shit went out. <laughs> okay, you just do. It's a well, grand this, deception. This comes back to Mappa Monday again, because again, yeah, it does. showing the prime meridian going straight down through Jerusalem. And now it's Greenwich. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I think it shifted more than that. It may have been, um, well, I think it may have been a Cairo at some stage, but um, that's a very unusual Jerusalem in the second in the centre there, because this map is from 1290. Yeah, in the centre of there is Jerusalem. What you're seeing is a very intricate, hyper modern Starfort system, or whatever it is. It looks like it's actually alien or something. It doesn't belong in that time period on that map. It really, really, really doesn't. Something is very wrong with that map. It really is, especially these um, these creatures like the wallabies with a uh, face on their chest. These cryptoids that are all over the map. Um, did they exist only five hundred years ago? <laughs> I think we might have heard about them. But um, the the map of Monday is. I think we were meant to go and see that, Nathan. There's a lot of answers. It's not just America that's not on there. It's Australasia as well, uh, and the Pacific. It's it's just Asia and Africa and Europe. It's half the world is missing. They present that. So why are people presuming what they present now is um, is what all is there? Like you said, Nathan, the, the Google Earth ball is is not CGI pixels on a screen. Why are we just take saying that as sanctum and that's the end of it? Not to me. The maths is complex. I give them that, but they got computers to work it all out. You know, you um, they're just mind. presenting. Can you can you just let it go? Because I think it's. It's set to be at the right distance, and you're getting what are called plosives, where you over. I know. Oh. Boom, boom. Yeah, I know. Off my screen. So, <laughs> just let it go. It's perfect when you've got it. Excuse me. Yeah, sorry to break the flow. No, no, you're right. No, you're right. But um, like you said, they just present that. So why do people presume that's all there? With us? they're presenting that now. Um, I think the, the, this deception I've witnessed with my own eyes. You know, like I had in that museum. You look too deeply. You know, you're going to get threatened with the police. Um absolutely crazy you know can i just say just a little tiny segue and um, i witnessed something outside today and i filmed it i put it on my channel and i took it off in about 20 views because i wasn't sure if i could actually put it on my channel or not um it was and police all outside my house by you with machine guns and outside by you with machine guns i got it all on film and all on like camera uh because this guy who's been pissing me off basically um he got stabbed to pieces outside the shop by there so i did it all on film i come back i thought well Oh, this is so exciting. It's like being in the Bronx. I think I'll put it on my blog. But then I thought, hang on, what's the legality of that? Do I have to ask permission? <laughs> the news do it, don't they? We're, we're oh, way off. <laughs> they might confiscate I know, it's your segue. footage. They could confiscate your footage as evidence. That's what I thought. Thank you, Jibby. Well, it's gone anyway. Got it. Got rid of it. Thanks. Answer, answer that. But yeah, this grand deception is biblical. Biblical. I can't even believe it half the time. But I, um, if I dig in every day on the same sort of code or the system that I got, I will get the same result. And it's a serious absence of the past. And I had it again today. My heart was pounding in my chest. I thought, oh, my God. I got to put it down. It was really spooky. And, and it's not like being ignorant and missing something. It's not there. It's just not there. There's a wall, a white wall. You can't pass. And they put it there. There's, there's nothing beyond it. What has happened, I can't imagine. Really spooky and unnerving yeah, as well. Some of your videos, and we discussed this the other night, Martin, was you were often putting up pictures and you were kind of describing them as though they were photographs. And I said, I don't know if it was in your live stream, but I said, well, these are just sketches. You know, they're very, very intricate pencil sketches. So even back then, you know, today the modern equivalent would be NASA with CGI and that sort of clever representation of what is reality but back then they literally just did pencil drawings rather than photographs and then said this is this is what happened this is how it was <laughs> it was like that isn't anything that's just a pencil drawing you know, that's, it, that's come from someone's imagination and then yeah. you see the pictures and um yeah i'm sure we had this conversation i don't want people to write in the comments i did a cursory google search and found people in photographs but it seemed to be there was a huge absence of people in the photographs not in the, not in the pencil sketches but there's a very 
sparse. You know, people are thin on the ground in the in the old photographs. Oh, of I found it again today in in a, such a populated city, city as Alexandria. But there is a narrow time frame you have to look for, and that's between eighteen forty two and eighteen fifty two. The photographs will be in a huge bronze color, and you'll find them randomly on Google. All of them will show you street scenes. All of them going to people, no matter what city you choose, at that same period. Mm, London, the most populated by, city. By the photographer, they picked a time that they didn't want any people, but, you know, it's one of them. Well, I, mean, that's, I had this argument in my comments with the lady, actually. She's like, well, um, first thing in the morning, daybreak. Well, in a city that's the biggest city, most populated city in the world, or a city of a million people at daybreak, that's buzzing with activity. People getting their barrels out, newspaper boys, postmen, people setting up their stalls. That's a busy time. There would be no people. Even in modern times, you can I could cut to the opening scene to 28 Days Later, filmed in the centre of London in about 2001, something like that. And it's completely empty. It looks like... It's first thing in the morning. It's probably 4 a.m. on a really cold morning and no one's out. Yeah, it's not residential there, though. It'll only be busy during office times on Westminster Bridge, Nathan. I've gone across that at 4 in the morning without a soul on it. It's, nobody lives there. So, you know, the office people. See it at 9 o'clock, it's, it's bedlam. But no, it's always dead around that area, Nathan. Always. In, in Maybe we can, you'll be back in at this point and say well you, you've had so many debates with people like charles and you're debating about things like copernicus and that timeline now that we're questioning it do you with plenty of knowledge of that timeline think it's bunk think it's true what, what's your take on it well, i think it's i think it's stories from the royals i think that that's like the king's decree yes uh these this is this is the history go spread this out to the vassals and and they have to accept it because that's the king's decree. It's one of these things. Like, that's their uh, entitlement of uh, what they say is true just the way we do it now with the TV. No matter what the TV tells everybody, they take it as the word of God. Um, it's just another version of it, of the royal uh, decree. It's, he makes his decree across the land, and this is now the new fact. Uh, it, it's just a, it's it's that. And... I don't in flat earth I never I never bring up past experiments uh Michelson Morley or things like that because I can't verify those things really happened one way or the other. Um I'm only working with what I I can put hands on and show people what they can put hands on for themselves but otherwise we're just hearsay. It's oh yeah hear about these guys 200 years ago they, their experiment proved it's flat. Well I don't know. <laughs> just the way I don't know that their experiments proved it was a ball. Anything like that, I cannot use. Uh, like, I never use the Bible to prove any, because you can't. Um, I, I want to prove. I don't want to prove a belief. I want to prove a fact. They were debating it forever. It's never stopped being debated, and that we can prove with some of the histo historic documents. Yes, I, that, many years yes. ago, they definitely didn't accept it universally. Nobody nope. has ever accepted the globe universally. No, there were towns in the 20th century. There were entire towns that would put the sign up as soon as you entered the town. Like, uh, no, no one in this town will ever call, you know, uh, this place uh, a globe. Or, you know, like the entire town was dedicated to not accepting the flat earth. And there were many religious communities as the, these uh, representatives would come in with the new information and the new books for the schools. They would always met with opposition saying like no this flies in the face of everything we've known for a very long time like, well nope this is the way it is now more important people with more money and resources have determined this so now <laughs> like you're that faced with that intimidation uh -huh. you ever seen that clip of Bonanza GB when uh, the school teachers telling them about the yep. human model and the, the, the clergyman comes over and goes don't listen to her yeah yeah don't listen to him <laughs> yeah 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 that's a great clip yeah little house on the prairie and she's oh, explaining yeah. He's explaining, contrary to the townsfolk's crazy notion that the Earth is flat, that the Earth is a globe. Is that right? So she's yeah. coming with the controversial globe theory? Yep. Yeah, exactly that. Yep. So and for, I, you touched on this too, Nathan. I'm not sure how your take on it. Uh, what is your belief on the accuracy of the world population numbers? Oh, I got right. one on that. It's a nonsense to, to be able to 
you know, to, to guess what it is, 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 is it's, it's ludicrous. How can you guess India? How can you guess out in the India somewhere? Yep. Yeah, I, just got my, uh, I just got my second one in the past no. probably five or six years for me to, and of course, once again, I was chosen for the advanced survey where I got to tell them, you know, what wow. my rectal temperature is and everything. And, uh, and that's like twice in, the, in a decade. Yeah, and and when you get selected, you're supposed to only be selected for the advanced uh, census once in a great while. But now I think they're just doing this every year. Is that all of America now, Jimmy? Is it just having this? I think they are getting to the point now where they're just selecting everybody to do a more in-depth survey and right. seeing seeing if people will sit there and know the law, which is just you only need to tell them the number of occupants and that's it. But oh. they have all these series of questions: income, race, all that stuff. Oh, I imagine. And I think it's a bluff to get people to go, well, they say I have to do this, so I will. Most people are ignorant. They don't know what the law is, legal, lawful, all this stuff. So this will dupe many people who just don't want hassles. And they, this is how America operates. It's all about just pay it so you don't feel the hassle. Go yeah. to court for the traffic thing. Go to the, oh, I'm just going to pay the tax. Oh, I'm not going to go for an abatement because it's too much trouble. I'm just going to pay. And they, they have this, and then they just keep upping it and upping it and upping it. And it's just heavier and heavier and heavier. And you just, oh, whatever you say, whatever you say. And it takes the fight out of you because you have to fight every single piece of mail that comes to you to fight for your, for your basic uh, rights. You have to fight now. You, they'll make a mistake on your utility bill to see if you notice. And you got to sit there on the phone for hours and fight. And then it gets corrected and normalized. You have to fight for normal. You have to fight for fair. I've been doing this years, just fighting for fair. There is a byproduct of it being legitimized because we're talking about something that does make up our history. And because X amount of people have ticked X amount of boxes doesn't mean that that's necessarily how it's reported. Again, no. we are pitching that we are living in the midst of a deception. So if you have people that feel that it's absolutely compulsory and really necessary and really important, when you have figures that are derived from the census, people feel that they are legitimate. Therefore, it lends credence to any history that is gauged with that particular use, that particular um, documentation. And each each thing, um, each agency that's reporting on the census, I'm assuming they just send their numbers to a central location and then they count them all up. So they don't know each other's count. See what I'm saying? So you yeah. get the count at the end, and then you can just add a subtract a zero, or whatever they want to do to make it. They always they're, they're deceiving one way or the other. I think the world population is much lower than what they say. I think you need to take a digit off, yeah, and then too. you'll be more accurate. And I, I always cite the Georgia Guidestones from 1980. They were erected in 1980, and everybody talks about, oh, look at the number on it, and keep the population under 500 million. That means they're going to kill a bunch of us. If you go back to 1980 and look at the world population, it was stated as 4.5 billion. Take a digit off, that's 450 million. Now the Georgia Guidestones make sense. Yes. You know what I'm saying? The so I think they do this, this long count in math. And, uh, so you're saying you think it's 700 million currently? I think it's, yeah, I think that they're saying it's much larger than what it is and that coincides with oh there's too many people we got to cut you guys down oh yeah it's too many of you too many of you oh the resources you're taking all the resources it's it's more that deception like there's so many of us but why would the georgia guides don't say what they said uh with the numbers reported <laughs> like you said <laughs> about to ask you that question jimmy <laughs> how does the georgia seemed... guidestones fit into all of this um, well, I think that's a good count for the accurate uh, count of the population as they may have been playing the milliard billiard trick mm. where a milliard is a billion, a billiard is a trillion, that kind of game. And they might have been doing the uh, in Latin, you know, type of thing where, oh, no, you misinterpreted that number. See, we, this is the milliard scale and it's a long count math and they do the same thing with uh, unemployment numbers. They, they, we never get the accurate number. So why would we assume the population is an accurate number when they have never given us an accurate number of anything, even the year? <laughs> it's, 
is not accurate. Nothing's accurate. The distance from here to the sun's not accurate. Nothing is accurate. Yeah, no. So world population, likely not accurate. Uh, Georgia Guidestones, though, pretty benevolent when you read through past the first one that, that people assume is culling 90% of the population. The rest of them seem pretty benevolent. So why assume that the first one's not as well if the population was for 150 million at the time? There is no culling. That still leaves room for 500,000 people or whatever. Uh, I don't think my math's wrong now. You know what I'm saying. Like it, it leaves room for more growth. Doesn't make anybody feel claustrophobic. And uh, I don't know. That that's that's my interpretation. There's others out there too. But. No, I agree with you, JB. I think there's definitely less people. Look, they say there's a billion more people on the plane than there was in 1999. The jumps have been too expansive since the 1800s. I agree with you, JB. They have fiddled it along the way, and there's not as many people. They're too concentrated in cities, and the countryside is empty. Yep. And these vast areas, and oh, you know, I suppose you've flown across America. I have it's flown to, empty. yep, I've flown to California, I've flown south, I've flown north. Empty. So I've covered empty. the US, and it is a good 90, 95% green. <laughs> it's exactly. green. There's it's lots empty. of room. There's <laughs> <laughs> loads of room, exactly. So. Yeah, I can it's concur. Empty. 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 The, the, the land is sparse of people. You know, there's, there's very little populated areas when you're flying over vast expenses of land. You, know, you fly over Europe and you think it's all going to be farmland. And it's not. You know, lots, vast swathes of it is unpopulated. Right, yeah. but they want to control, they want to get their arms around, you know, their herd. No, they don't want to get them too far spread and too settled and this, that. And plus, you don't want them discovering or stumbling upon things that might reveal a new truth or an old mm. truth. You know what I'm saying? They always yeah. got to keep a scare tactic at play. Like, you know, I always thought the Georgia George Guidestones might be, you know, a dialectic to sort of unnerved population to think they might be called somewhere along the line. You know, they use like, you know, remember the ozone layer? And then it miraculously fixed it, you know, chicken licking the skies falling in. And then it moved on to um, what? Um, some greenhouse gases. Okay, CSEs. Then they sort of fixed that miraculously. Then they moved on to now climate change. You know, they keep got out this chicken licking thing and they keep developing it and they just dump it, move on with the next without even telling you how they fixed the last. Remember right. the ozone hole? Just, let's just forget that Big Brother style, shall we? 1984, like it never existed. Before the ozone, before the ozone hole, it was acid rain. We were supposed to worry about. Oh yeah, acid rain. There's the other one before it. Exactly. Now you're following the pattern. You see what they do? Chicken licking the sky's falling in a dilemma. It's very conducive to fear-based mind control, and that, you know, the Bernaysian way of of controlling people and programming their minds is a very recent thing. So it's just kind of stand to reason that this might be much more recent than we. Let on, and that for me ups the excitement level because if it's a sh if it's a, a shorter time frame that we're talking about. Like I said earlier, we could potentially have the deceivers very much amongst us. You know, that it might not necessarily be them that started it, but it could be their son, daughter, granddaughter. You know, we're talking shorter timelines. We're talking the six degrees of separation, the Kevin Bacon game that we mentioned earlier. We could oh, be yeah. a lot closer to our deceivers than we think, and if that's the case. It's not if it's not as system based as I have currently sort of alluded to me or my belief being, oh, yeah. you know, long established and in the systems and the education system. That's why it's perpetuating itself. But it might not be the case at all. It might be like all the other false flags. It's just still in motion, still the bullshit's being um, created. And that could be why we are kept in this small corner of the internet. We're here, you know, divulging the cracks in the heliocentric system for them to be smeared over again for maybe only the third or fourth time in 100, 150 years maybe, as opposed yeah. to 500 to 2,000 years. Yeah, well summed up. That, yeah. It seems uh, in, in America, it, flat Earth, globe Earth was still alive and well, very strong, probably till the 1940s, 1950s in newspapers on the radio then we have the world wars now our our priorities have to change we don't have time for a meeting of flat earth debate basically is the mentality at the time you have to donate your chocolates and your nylons 
to the you know and your steel and and we got to help the war effort and that's how it was in america it's just a propaganda yeah. propaganda they put propaganda in bugs bunny cartoons and it's just so you constantly and then they put the globe in the bugs bunny cartoons he throws the ball and it comes back the other way and so they were sticking the propaganda in your basic fundamental children's cartoons to get it to the minds of the young and new generation who was not aware of the flat and the globe debate. So it's a whole new thing where now as the children are watching the cartoons, that they feel, you know, embedded subconsciously like, oh, this globe has already been established. It's even in the cartoons. Like it's it's just the way it is. So to, the, to that generation, it's absurd to, to argue about it at that point. But you'll have the older generation, the World War One generation. Ah, it's all crap. Ah, it's nonsense. The Hollywood, it, ah, psh, it's nonsense. And we thought those old birds were crazy. <laughs> Far from it. We often on these videos will joke about having the globe from cradle to, to death. And normally it's the example of the mobile with all the planets on it. But my kid yes. listens to nursery rhymes, and the current raft of nursery rhymes have been adapted with heliocentrism. So you've got three blind mice, and instead of having their tails cut off with a carving knife, they're flying off to the moon in a space rocket. And I'm singing along to this nursery rhyme, you know, three blind mice, and suddenly the lyrics change, and it's going to the moon. I'm like, what? Wow. <laughs> you know, reading, literally my, what is she now, 15-month-old child, the notion that going to the moon, it being a physical object, and being able to travel to it, and it being away from the spherical Earth, is embedded before she can even speak. Just phenomenal. Wow. Yeah, because the spheres and the stars are solid objects in the cradle, in the crib, going around and around, and they play with it, and it's a ball. It's a sphere, these yeah. planets. And they love selling you the stickers and the little things for the, and very heliocentric things for your child, for your baby, in the crib. So it's, it's already embedded, the imagery. Yeah. yeah. And like Marlena, uh, the, the native, Canadian yeah. was saying um, children can communicate with you at two, three months old through sign language. So they're in, in taking lots of data and they can't speak yet. But if you, you know, make the hand gestures, yes, you can communicate with your three month old. So they are intaking all of it, all the imagery on these tablets and everything, which is another, th that's a whole other conversation, but uh, oh. d d all of the imagery they're taking in. So to tell them none of that was true. It just rivals every single fiber of their being and will produce that anger reaction. It's like, oh, what? <laughs> you know, which is what we experience all the time here. They do. People have seen it as a crime in the past, though, because I read that Shenton book. Um, I actually done a little bit of it on my channel. Um, he just focuses on the, the education system in about 1907, and he said it's just throw up a deception. They're just teaching the kids utter lies, um, and is it a crime? You know, he's like literally think this is a criminal act at that stage. But I don't know that I was book fed in that day and age, but still around now. Good little read. Um, you know, but he's a flatist. They were called flatists back then. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a name and a label. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to demean them. Flatist. Yeah. Exactly. I, mean, I did mention really this. I touched on it, but I know David Weiss released a video where there was a billboard. Coincidentally, as we've had the billboard wow. in rally today. Um, but literally a anti-globe earth billboard back in the 1900s. Did either of you two see that? Yeah, man, I seen it. I got to actually I, I pictures not. of it. Yeah, it's to do with Blunt. And she took, there was like literally on the streets in New York with um, with um, well, they had globes on sticks and they were like, this is fake. And they were just flat earth um, banners as well. It was absolutely epic. And one in the streets up on the building in New York as well. This was in about 1912 or something like that, just before the First World War. Incredible to be doing it. That was back at a time where all of our voices were equal, pretty yeah. much. And then now you have the radio and the television establishment and the moving pictures, which were owned by them. That's the loudest, most prevalent, widespread voice now that will trump all those speaking of flat earth, the truth. And that's what took over in the 20th century was that loud, powerful, dominant voice. It's the globe. It hears the imagery constantly everywhere. And that's really what turned the tides towards the globe. So they've only really had, I would say, like advantage globe, maybe 60, 70 years. Look, that's it. And we're starting now, right now, after 60 or 70 years, which is pretty much almost the whole time of NASA, 
waking up out of this this dream, this fantasy illusionary yeah. reality. Yeah, try so, and dig in into like go into like Victorian, maybe early as you can, um, to see how you know like the way that it's high end brainwashing with the globe programming. How how high end high end was it in the eighteen hundreds? Because I don't think it was a prevalent, you know. I just think that it was in their school books. They weren't questioning it. Um, they never had cinema, television, radio wasn't in, you know, conceived to the turn of the century, so or, or a little bit earlier. But um, I don't think they um, had the same brainwashing. So I think they were definitely outside of it. I think we've gone backwards a bit as well, you know, because their oh, handwriting was beautiful and their creativity. And look at us now, big nasty corporate buildings, our handwriting's like crap. The literal works are rubbish compared to the literal works of the mid 1800s. It's ridiculous that, the, you know, the way we changed humanity, you know, the dumbing down has been massive in the last hundred years. It has, it has. They've been relying on people not waking up. It's this, the internet, the greatest library on earth at our hands. And with a critical mind, <laughs> a discerning mind. The, well, if you if you measured the IQ of the children 100 years ago to now, it would not even be, it, it would be like going against apes. Uh, with the children going against apes. I, no, actually, I, I I stand corrected. We did go against the apes in memory tests. It was on ABC News as video clips on YouTube. It was a memory test, computer screens and, and clicking on numbers in numerical order, and the apes kicked our ass. No Literally, way. They kicked our ass. They, they wiped us out. Because if you got it right, you got to treat uh, the humans and the apes. You got to treat. And they show you, like, you know, the apes get it right. And they'll flash, and they'll try to trick them, only show partial numbers. And you got to get them in order. And the apes got it right, and the people couldn't even come close. Couldn't even come close. So if intelligence is based on the ability to memorize, we've already been conquered by the apes. Because they've got us blown away on the ability to memorize. It's, that's ABC News. That's, that's mainstream. They're, they're showing that. Which is probably another form of shaming everybody. Look at everybody. The, the apes are smarter than you. Smarter is if smarter means memorization, which that's another deception. You're all told to believe, look at how well you memorized and regurgitated the information. Now you have a high IQ. You're intelligent. Are you? It's, that's To me, that's not intelligence. Intelligence is somebody who can fix a car without being taught how to. They, they're looking at it. They're figuring it out. That's true intelligence. Somebody could figure something out without the instructions. To me, exactly. it's natural, pure, true yeah. intelligence. Thinking outside of the box, thinking for themselves, questioning, yeah, critical survive. thinking. I find this is a good intelligence. Survival intelligence. I think it's an essential. Can I get Survival? you to maybe round out these points? I'm going to maybe in a few minutes' time round out the Google oh, okay. part of this show. So if you can maybe bring it back to how we've possibly been in terms of the heliocentric system and the presentation throughout history. Maybe if we can start with you, Matt, and then we'll go on to Jibby, and then I'll thank the audience and well, so forth. For my mind, it's easier. Um, it was easier put in than uh, you could uh, imagine because they have all of the education systems, the religious centers, no matter what denomination, if it's one all powerful um, controlling entity or parasite or whatever they are, and they have all of the universities and all of the schools, so whatever is handed to us is by them. And isn't it not conceivable that they could possibly rewrite things for their own ends, corrupt men? Yeah, it is conceivable. So that's what's happened. They rewrote history, they rewrite records, all like the census that Jibby's been doing, or any birth records or any records, full stop. Go somewhere, don't they? Yeah, well, they go to them. And do you think they're just standard, or do you think they may be altered down the line? Well, they can do whatever they please. So from my mind, we haven't been here long, the fa past is a fabrication, and they have altered everything to fit it. And when you dig in, it is there. It is there, spooky, but it is there. It is there. I would never have believed it, but the heliocentric model just dissolves with this because it just doesn't make any sense. You can't nothing to hide back on. If you look, I was trying to touch upon something just now, Nathan. If you try and research into heliocentricism previous to 1850, there's no information in the science books. It's not there. There's no information in, in not really in when you Google like maps or, or pictures of globes. There's one 1542, the old one that always turns up. Try and find something in between that period. Not that many there. And they're in dealers' hands or in sort of museums like the Smithsonian or what have you. But none out there. You think you think if it'd been around that long, they would have been on mass. No man, they ain't been around long at all. 
at all. I'm telling you. Nobody was literate, really. Nobody was literate, brother. Yeah. This is uh, certainly what you're looking into on your channel. I positively encourage everyone who's watching this to subscribe to Martin Leitke, aka Flat Earth British. Can we get your take on it, Jimmy? What, what, do you think? what do you think the history has been fudged? How has it been fudged? Why has it been fudged? Well, we, we're not going to know the whys until we get them strapped to a chair in interrogation. But to me, in America, from what I'm seeing, this flat earth, globe earth, only took kind of a kind of a shadow position around the 1950s and till probably early 21st century when flat earth started to resurge. Never really went away, but it was only very small pockets of people because of it, it, it's basically who's louder than the other and the voice of the people were being trumped by NASA and the television and the radio and the propaganda from the government repeatedly um, because they own all those mediums that we don't have access to so we can't grab one of them and be just as loud like say have our own channel the flat earth channel on television it's not going to happen well it should we should have that right but it won't as 9-11 and you know investigation channel will never happen or things like that so they control that loud voice but now we're using one of their mediums the internet uh, we're connecting but we're not really getting to that volume level where we can say it's still flat, you know, like it's just globe, 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 globe. We're getting there. And now with the media explosion, probably this weekend will be a big media explosion uh, for Flat Earth, which will bring a lot of attention to it. And I have no idea where it's going to go. But in America, it seems like the globe has only had advantage for probably 70 years, really. Other than that. Ill, 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 illiteracy um, prevented people from being able to prove it one way or the other. And illiteracy has only been a thing probably 150 years on average in America. So this globe is not even close to how old they say it is. Right. By far. Yeah, I mean, I remember back in the days when I first started looking into this subject, it was presented as a non sequitur argument from the debunkers and globe heads. If you were to say that NASA are faking space, therefore the Earth is flat. But from my perspective now, I'd say that that's actually not a non sequitur argument. If what you observe in your reality is flatness, and the only thing that's debunking that is fake pictures from a nonsense agency like NASA, then you can still safely assume that what you're Seeing with your own two eyes is actually factually the case. So anyway, with that, I'm going to say a huge, massive thank you, first and foremost, to all of the people who have joined us in the Google Plus live stream. So be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And a massive thank you to, first again, Jibby Jebba, Jibby, get my tongue around it, Jibby Jedi. Thank you very much indeed for being here. It's been a pleasure. Yep, tongue twister. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks for having me. And also Martin Leitke, it's been a real pleasure having you here. Hopefully you can both hang around a little bit afterwards for the after show in the OBS stream. But it's yeah. been a pleasure having you here, Martin. Oh, yeah, it's always a pleasure. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> it's been awesome. Good stuff. Once again, if you are new to this channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate, the Flat Earth video logs, and the Flat Earth group shows and interviews. I've been Nathan Oakley. I will see you all in the next video.